Yo, I'm live, Brian Joe, and we're going to do a video here about painting radiators. All right? You see here, got this lovely radiator. On. It's got a few, what we say, indentation marks. What happens when you get old, you know? A few crow's feet, through beat up stuff, all that kind of game. Weathering, it's got a bit of weathering, all right? So, what we got here, we've got this jerk, Johnson's. It's a professional undercoat, and we're going to use that. We're going to have the first base on this, so. We put that on there. Then after that, we're using this little rustings one. I really like. See this? What I like about it, it dries them off and, and the smell. You can barely smell it. Which you use some of these radiator paints. You turn it on and it gets hot. It gets powerful. Best time to do painting radiators. Just now. End of summer. Don't need a radiator on. Get away with it. It'll look good. Plus, who is it? I think it was one of them Cockney philosophers, Hugh Grant. He said, radiator is like a portal to the soul, right? You gotta leave, you know what I mean? I heard him on the podcast, it's only good. You also notice here, there's an earth wire on here. What you wanna do, take it off. Maybe it's an earth wire because it's, it's a copper pipe. Sometimes you get a little ping. If you've ever been out of the country and there's like a little field, you know, little kind of fences or whatever, they ping up. That's why they put them on there because the shock current comes through the ass. So what we'll do one screw it, one screw the last, we'll start on the top here and we'll just paint the pipe. What we'll do, we've got two little screws here and there, one screw, just leave it on the floor, wait for it to dry and we'll put it back on so it's all safe and sound. Right, my name's Brian Joe, like and subscribe, it's gonna be a good video. Like I said, glossy up radiators is puck. So this is the main culprits of the radiator, sort of the scuffs. I said they all run just general weathering of old paint scratches and all that stuff. Here, yeah. right, see at the bottom here, see all these rusty bits of paint here. What we use, we're gonna use some of that steel wool. We'll get that off of that. It works well with that stuff. This is what I'm talking about, earth wire. We'll remove that while we do the painting and we'll put it back on. So it's a little thing here. Take that off. Okay, so you unscrew that, take it off. Again, it's just from, give you that little electric shock. Probably won't happen, but you know, it's just safety and stuff. So this crap as well, crud, still wool all that well as that, but it's just all dirty stuff. So what we're gonna do is, this is gonna be painted. That's gonna be painted. We'll leave that for now. I would say if someone's already painted it, paint it. If they haven't, I'd rather, I usually prefer to leave it. But you know, use the still wool, shine it up, get a little shine on it, you know what I mean? Make it look nice. I always think, don't paint something if it hasn't been painted. The original always looks better. But because that's been painted, we'll paint that. And that bottom one's been painted. So we'll paint that as well. But again, we're going to leave that because it looks nicer. The original originality always looks best. That is the number one rule painting. If you, if, you, if you can get away with the original, go for it. It's always going to look nicer. People prefer that as well. You never know where you're going to go in a couple of years' time. Someone might prefer something, so less damage or something, the better. That's the golden rule of thumb. Right, let's crack on, see what we get on. We're going to start off with the old uh, Mildred Blaster and stuff. Oh, it's lethal. It's, you can always tell good cleaning products because they just make you buzzing, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to straight over there. Things with the back of the radiator. There's only certain land you can do on the back of the radiator. I'll show you in a little while, but don't get too caught up about it. I know this is gonna sound really strange, but sometimes people can get too, what's it called? Perfectionist about stuff. There's no point. Nothing in life. You can't get perfectionist about anything. It's not when you get your brand new pair of trainers, you try to look after them for about 10 minutes. Then you're dopey and you Flick out your last bit of tea or something and it hits your, hits your white crisp trainer and you think, oh man. So there's nothing you can do about it. Just, just do what you can do. Like I said, we're behind the radio. What we want to do mainly with behind the radio and stuff is just get all the dirt and dust off it, yeah? So you see in between there, get all the dirt off there, all the crunch. Because this is the stuff that will show through when you're painting. Even though we're using some real good undercoat, it will still show through, so you really want that bit to cut off, yeah? Anything the undercoat, 
you will get the blown shit because it's all paint because it's a room so it's been painted God knows how long the radiator's been there it's been like that it's been caveman probably put the radiator in but 300 BC I think so you know this has had a lot of paint jobs to get in between the little cracks here yeah? just give it a run and then what we do like I said still wall and just take off that piece of crap. You can see that falling off. Be careful though, it's quite sharp, alright? So if you want to use kind of some sort of heavy glass, well, tradesman's glass or whatever. Use them. There you go, look at that. What you can do as well, just get a little scraper and scrape the excess of that stuff off. You'll look good. Scrape a little bit. paint off that right This look a real good job, yeah. It's like I always say, if you're gonna paint it, you paint like a pro, alright? It's an integral whole part of the house because it's where everyone will get to see you, alright? And it's basically the place you are gonna go every single day. It might get a little good, alright? Excuses. Okay. So now we got, you see, we got all that crud off in the middle. Give it a wipe down, and then we're gonna get this professional undercoat on it. And it is gonna look crystal and beautiful, all right? Again, these are these little awkward spots you find yourself in with the radar. This old paint that needs to kind of come off. Otherwise, Can leave a stain. You can see through it when you paint other stuff on it. So this we're going to paint on the side of the radar. Anyway, as you can see there, I'll we'll paint that panel there. You can't really do anything on top of that. So don't worry about it too much. Obviously, you want to do the top. Again, you're going to have the panel down the side thing here, which will paint. We'll scrape some of that paint off it here. Just so it doesn't come through in the undercoat and stuff. Just generally all that paint, man. Alright, I'm going to paint there. Because I've got a lot of room, I'm just going to paint that in a can, but you know, always give yourself a nice little pot or whatever that you've got. And yeah, that way it's easier to paint. But like I said, because you're doing the video, I'm just doing it with a can, you know. Not a lot of room when you've got video camera there and all that stuff. It's not the same as if I was painting your angry ass professionally, okay? This is not Hollywood, it's just all glitz and glamour. Yeah, it's like opening a flying bottle of Bollinger. Very much on par with that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right, remember the number one funnel? Give it a good stir, right? Like that, mate. It's nothing like the chemicals are rushing through your brain. Johnson's professional undergloss. Yeah, good stuff this is. Really good. Right, that's a nice little stir. 
Remember, this stuff's powerful. I'm using a brush, good old Harris brush, but I'm not gonna lie, it's been used a few times before, so after using this stuff, it's usually hard to survive. So I'll always start at the top of the painting. Get your paint and bring it close to the obstacle, or whatever you're gonna paint. I'm gonna start at the top, because things always work their way down, okay? So just start at the top corner. Remember, this is an undercoat, yeah? So you don't have to worry about it looking. This is not the finished article. Again, always just start with all the top stuff. Because if you start here and you're coming up and everything, wait, just start here and then work your way down. It's just simpler that way. But again, there's, there's not one rule to fix all, yeah? Someone's like, you can do it whatever way like, you get the best results. So this is the way I've been shown. And it seems to work best for me because things I remember painting when I was a kid. And you know, I would paint anywhere and it could get really messy, you know? So, again, just start at the top. And all of that as well, because it will always start dripping. That way you can keep dripping. And then you go down. It doesn't leave horrible streaks. But really, I love this undercoat. It's so lovely, mate. You probably, you, you, you'll, you'll finish it with this and you'll think, especially if you're nice and it's the end of summer, you'll think, is it even worth putting a proper overcoat on it? Or should we just go out and get laggy? Which, if I wasn't getting paid to do it, that's exactly what I'd be doing. Oh, I'd say, climate change, you might like a meter radiator. Let's not get it taken out, mate. Sell it. Shit for a pack of cigarettes, mate. That's how much they cost these days. All right, look at this. Again, like I said, keep going on top, going across. Doesn't have to look crystal, but we want it to look like you are entering somewhere of prestige. Every eye should aim for that, you know. I don't know, I've come accustomed to this Johnson's gloss, man. The smell of it is just juicy. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of like one of those weird kids that used to like smelling tipex and stuff all over. And I ain't one of them people, right? So. Alright, this is looking good. Like I said, it is the last days of summer, so best time to paint it. Saying that, the last days of summer, I was sitting out in the park on these the other, I think it was the other week, and we had one of those big old bully XL dogs just come waltzing over me, just come and take over your territory. I mean, it was big, buff. I love dogs, but I have to admit, I looked at him, I was a wary, and the things I didn't want my niece to see, I was, you know, worried. So what I do, I come over the top and then look like I'm not wearing so something. Grabbing him up, oh, boy, yeah, how's he going? And I can tell this dog was going to be taken back. <laughs> I think he's usually people scared of him. Oh, yeah. What's going on? And then he's dog for young. Man. She looked like she would find it trouble to walk a lap around the Tesco with Metro. Come on, Russell. Come on, leave him alone. You two look like you need to buy a room. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Leaving me here with your big savage dog. <laughs> but yeah, I have to admit, they aren't nice dogs, but <laughs> if it went naggy, man, there's nothing you can do to stop that, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at him, he's ferocious. I'm tall stone, tall stone two, and I'm six foot. And I'm looking at it, and I don't fancy my chances. So God knows when you see them people out in the street. But again, like I said, I like dogs, so I don't want to see you know, innocent dogs killed and stuff. But I don't know. I think some owners will really have to switch themselves on, you know? Some of them are just docile, you know what I'm saying? Feral, mate. That's the word, feral. Right, this radiator up is going to look lovely now. Whether you can see the brightness of it. Alright, 
here we go. So we just want to make sure, as you can see here, look at that. There's no drips. But if you do get drips, just always look for these type of places that will always come up on these corners here, or places like here, underneath there, and them little indentations. So always be careful of that. Just to keep going over a little bit. Nice. Remember, this is just an undercoat, so, but an undercoat is still very important because the drips will show through on the proper coat. So you know, it's the main main things of the undercoat. Just want to take away them blemishes. We don't want to leave any drips or anything noticeable. Right, that looks lovely now. And again, got over that horrible rusty things under here. Next one does have rust proofing on it. That's why we've got the other stuff as well. Because that is a bit rusty. But it's going to come out nice. Man. Like I said the radiators, they really are. They're getting this like fashion. I always come back to the fashion thing, but women, I know some of them, women are great at DIY and doing painting. So if there's anyone watching, they'll know what it means. To get what a good radiator does to the room. It's like buying a, a nice dress or something, or an accessory. And this is like the belt. It's not point buying some big fancy dress or something, and you wanted a nice belt accessory and it's all beat up or it don't go with it. It's the same with a radiator. You want your radiator to look nice, man. Because it does, it shines. It shines heat into the room. Not just physically, but mentally. Remember that, all right? Getting them little cracks and that. And just brush it down, smooth it out. Remember, this is our palace. We want this looking bunting, all right? Don't do a half ass job or nothing. Do it proper or don't do it. Or get me in and I'll do it for you. I don't do halves, mate. Do the full ticket, right? That's looking good. I'm gonna go on and do the bottom bits of the pipe. Like I said, I'm gonna take off that earth wire. Always remember to put it back on, keep it safe, right? Right, we're getting there. I'm working it. It's a good job. Right. right, as we can see, it's all looking good here. Sure, I've recently just started driving here. Yeah? I didn't realize that how much of a pain in the back you get from it. I know loads of trades people, one thing we suffer with, bad backs. Tell you in the hand, I'm gonna show you this move, it's called a McKenzie stretch. You know? Do this, right? So, on the floor, you lay down like that. So you've got your back straight like that. Basically, what you're gonna do, put your arms to the side like that, and go up like that. And just hold that move. You wanna just flatten your legs out, this room is not big enough. Hold that for five seconds. Then you go back down again. And do it again. Keep doing it. I'm telling you now. Do five of them when you go up in the morning. Do five of them for lunch. Then for lunch. Do five of them after lunch. Do five of them at three o'clock. Five again when you get on. Do them before you get to bed. Save me. I blew my disc out fucking 10 years ago, I think. So my Australian physio, she showed me that. Big up to her, she's watching. It saved me. I met the geezer who did the thingy. Shoot me girl. I used to work in conferencing. I used to do building maintenance. I met him, shoot me girl. He was at a conference there. And he did the stretch and I see him and I said, thank you mate. Which is quite mental, really. it's quite surreal. Trust me, them stretches. Do them all the time. I'm just gonna get that cramped up, slight anger on your leg, and you move your leg up like that, and that should keep you up, bang. Do it down. Right, so we've got the first coat. First coat is on. Main thing, cover the blemishes. The rust at the bottom. But also, we don't want drips. So make sure you ain't got no drips. Right, so I always check out the corners. It's where they always happen, mate. 
Looking good, eh? Looking good. Oh.